أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I tested positive for COVID last night um, I normally do a lateral flow test every time I come to the center and I did one before I came yesterday afternoon and it was negative but at night it was positive and therefore we're going to have this recording for you today. Those of you who are near me, please test yourselves. Um, I pray, inshallah, that you, you you will test negative and you don't have this. But today is a phenomenal day. It's the day of Friday. And we're going to talk about Friday first. I promised that I would talk about Zikr and Salah and we'll do that too. But let's first talk about the day of Friday. So Imam Muhammad al-Baqar says that the sunrise of Friday is better than all the other days. The birds also when they meet on Friday say Salam on this righteous day. But we've got a combination here. Because you've got the Barakah of Friday and then you also have the Barakah of the month of Ramadan. My goodness, it's just phenomenal. You know, the Prophet said in the 24 hours of Friday, 600,000 opportunities to get freedom from the fire. And if you work that out, it's sort of every four seconds, you know, somebody gets freedom from the fire. And we need to. And we talked about it yesterday. Just istighfar, astaghfirullah, rabbi wa atul, as much as possible. And it's just a phenomenal day. You know, Prophet Yaqub, he says in the Quran, so far, astaghfirullah, rabbi. I will do istighfar for he's talking to his sons, right? Those who had kidnapped Prophet Yusuf. And when we looked at a tafsir, it tells us that he waited for Friday to ask for forgiveness. So this is a phenomenal day even while you're listening to me. Just do istighfar. If you can keep away from sins on Friday, then it's the forgiveness of all your past sins. The sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq, says that it's the best day to do ibadah together. Now, we're together. Ibadah means anything that connects us to divinity. So anything at all to be done together is just phenomenal. That is why on Friday, Salatul Jumu'ah is so important. When Allah says, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلسَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَاسْعُ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُ الْبَيْهِ When the call is given for the day of Jumu'ah, run, run, you know, فَاسْعُ run إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ To the remembrance of Allah, وَذَرُ الْبَيْهِ And leave all your businesses aside. But one of the things that we can do on this day is to be able to recite salawat as much as possible. We tell the children that the angels are going around with a clipboard and they write in silver and gold at the amount of salawat you do. And it goes up to the night of Saturday. So we've got two things here while we're sitting, salawat and um, istighfar. To recite Surah Al-Jumu'ah and understand it, inshallah we will look at it next Friday. But Surah Al-Jumu'ah is phenomenal. If you didn't recite it in Fajr or you didn't recite it in Zohar, then no, just recite Surah Al-Jumu'ah on the day of Jumu'ah. It is an amazing surah because it gives you protection from one Friday to the next. But in itself, it is just something else. To do a ghusl, and although it is recommended to do this ghusl between Fajr and Zohar, even now to go home and do wudu, the, um, the Prophet tells Imam Ali that, Ya Ali, even if you have to buy water and not food, you've got to purchase it then buy water and do ghusl, ghusl, because it's really important. And um, to recite the ayah of Quran, two, 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 with every ghusl. In Allah, you hibbul tawabin, wa you hibbul mutatahirin. This is something that we, we need to instill in ourselves. I tell children, just do ghusl and say two, 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 Allah knows. To apply perfume, to give sadaqah. Sadaqah on Friday, the uh, 60 mom says, excels. Um, all other sadaqah just as Friday excels all the other days to cut your nails now we may think you know what oh, what difference does it make if I cut my nails today um, on Friday or any other day well the prophet says it prevents many ailments and when you cut your nails to say bismillahi wa billahi wa ala sunnati uh, muhammadin wa ali muhammad to give gifts on Friday to make it special so the children know that it's Friday uh, Imam Ali said, please your family by buying what they like so they recognize that Friday is an Eid. One of the most amazing things to do on Friday is to acquire knowledge. Um, 
Imam Sadiq says, Woe to the person who doesn't set aside time on a Friday to seek knowledge. And the very fact that you and I are here and our children are here is that we are actually fulfilling this ahadith of the sixth Imam. And then Friday to remember our marhumi, all of them. I know we recite Fatih and sometimes we do it um, as a habit, but to remember them. There is a, 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 a hadith about the Prophet who was sitting in the mosque of Medina on Jumu'ah in the morning and he was crying when the people came in. Now you know at that time cities had these walls around them and if people brought news you would know because the doors of the walls would open and the people said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you so upset? I mean, we didn't see the doors open, we didn't see any new person come in and he said, it's your marhumin who have made me cry because you forgot them. Night of Friday begins um, as we call Thursday night is the night of Friday and he says you haven't remembered them so remember them with whatever little you can you know in Gujarati we say fool ne to fool ni bankri give a little bit of sadaqah for them do something good for them today if you learnt anything then dedicate that knowledge dedicate that learning of that knowledge to them quite really important to do something like that to eat a pomegranate increases divine energy in the heart so if you can't eat pomegranate because they're not in season at the moment, you would sort of eat pomegranate for sehri if possible. Well, if you can't, have a little bit of pomegranate juice. That near that it will change me, it will give me divine energy, is just something else. Recite Yanuru. You know, Yanuru 256 times, it doesn't matter how many times you do it. But it's like exercising a spiritual muscle. When people say, why is it a certain number of times I have to recite something? Well, I say when you're doing exercises for your muscles, you have to do them a certain number of times to be able to gain strength. The spiritual muscle needs the recitation a few times. So recite Ya Noor. Noor is energy. It's divine energy. It's absolutely phenomenal. And if you have a particular hajat, okay, maybe you can't do it this Friday because Fajr is over. But maybe next Friday, straight after your Fajr Salah, Recite Surah Al-Qafirun ten times in such time, ask for your hajat. But another thing you could do now is recite Surah Al-Nur, that's Surah number 24, and maybe a Tasbih of Yah Nuru. It has a phenomenal effect on a Friday, because Friday is all about this divine energy, this Nur that's absolutely, absolutely everywhere. But more so than anything else, if you can manage but to the end of the day, and you, we've still got a few hours, to be able to do istighfar and to be able to recite salah as much as possible, um, salawat rather, sorry, as much as possible. It really does make a difference. But what I promised I'd do is look at zikr as salah, and that's what we're going to look at. We'll look at the importance of salah. But our focus has been through the qamar. And the four ayat where Allah says, four times he says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَحَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Wa and, لَقَدْ indeed, يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ We have made the Qur'an لِلذِّكْرِ We've made it easy to internalize, easy to remember. فَحَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Who is there who will put a tiny bit of effort in? And you know, Salah actually encompasses all the dhikr that we have. I mentioned yesterday, that when Imam Hussein asked for one night of the ibadah, he said, "Ana uhibbu salah. I love salah." And then he says, "Wa tilawa tikitabi," and I love reciting his book. Well, wa kathratu dua and lots of dua and istighfar and all these are encompassed in salah. And I mentioned yesterday as well that we experience Quran in salah. So we looked at istighfar, we looked at Quran. And today we will look at Salah and we will look at it step by step. And inshallah, it will encourage us, especially in this month, to be able to understand our Salah. So in Surah Al Ankabut, which we will inshallah recite on um, Laylatul Qadr, Allah says, In the Salah, tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Salah keeps you away from bad thoughts and bad deeds. Salah is known as Umud al Deen, it is known as the pillar of religion. The Prophet said, if it's accepted, then everything is accepted. If it's rejected, then everything is rejected. It's a major part of our life. And you know what? If you can, recite Salah at the five times. Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Yes, I know you recite Zohar and Asr together. And you recite Maghrib and Isha together. But if you can, recite it in these five times. Very often at workshop, I ask the children the times of Salah. 
most do not know the time of Asr and Isha. And, and they get stuck and they sort of say, well, um, the calendar doesn't say it. So for example, today, um, Asr is, uh, was at about 4.43, just, just a little while ago. And Isha is 9.17. There's no harm in being able to recite Salah in five times. It is just phenomenal. Let's look at a step-by-step -step understanding. The Prophet said, two of my Ummah stand for Salah. And although the Ruku and Sujood have the same appearance, the difference is like between the earth and the sky because of a lack of the presence of heart. So the first thing is we must inculcate in ourselves the fact this is meeting the Creator. I'm standing in front of the Creator and therefore my heart should be present. Then the times of Salah, which I talked about, the, the wives of Rasulullah used to say that whenever the Salah time came, it was as though he disconnected from us. Imam Ali trembled during Salah time. And he would say, this is the time, this is the trust which was offered to the heavens, the earth, and the mountains. And they refused to bear it. And he, they would go to Bilal. The Prophet used to go to Bilal and say, Bilal, relieve us, please. We want access to the shores of Rahmah phenomenal this salah is access to the shores of rahmah when we looked at the um, sermon of the prophet we saw how he said at the times of salah fi awqat is salah raise your hands in dua because it is this time that allah looks at his abd with rahmah so the time of salah sets in and we go to wudu a group of people came to rasulullah and says why wudu on the cleanest parts and the prophet said when Shaitan whispered to Adam, Adam and Hawa said Hawa both came to the tree and they looked at it. So that's their face and that's why we wash our face. Then they walked towards it with their feet. That's why we wipe our feet. Then they reached out to the fruit with their hands and that is why we wash our hands. And then when they realized their error, they put their hand on their head now all of us subconsciously do that when we've done something wrong and they wept and that's the reason for wudu you think about all those things now imagine you've done wudu in your bathroom and you're walking towards your musalla can you imagine the prophet said Allah is saying where are you where are you I've been waiting for you now the best place of prayer is obviously the masjid but at your home, have a designated place. And as you walk towards it, think you're walking towards the door of the king's palace. And at the door, the sixth imam says, he answers. So say at the door, Who is there who answers the, 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 the person who is distressed? Who is there who answers the distressed one and removes his evil? So do that as you approach your musalla. Then you face Qibla and Surah Al-An'am, ayah 100 and, um, not 100, it's ayah 79 actually, when Allah says, Inni wajahdu wajhi lillahi ladhi fatara samawati wal ard. You're saying, I am turning towards he who created the heavens and the earth. Hanifan, upright, this is Dua of Ibrahim. وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And I don't associate anything with Allah. So the goal is literally, I am connected to Allah and nobody else. Remember, Salah is not about getting any gains. It's not about anything else but creating this intimate connection, this strong connection with Allah. So you face Qibla. Now the first thing you and I will do is pick up our chadars and cover ourselves. And to when we're covering ourselves to think, I am covering myself with his generosity and his forgiveness. Imagine wearing the clothes of God consciousness. You're enveloping yourself in his extreme kindness. And to say the words, the, the Asma al Husna, like Ya Sattar, Ya Ghaffar, or one who covers um, my bad deeds, my sins, or one who is Ghaffar, or one who will cover me from the consequences of the things that I do wrong. And I repeat again, Allah does not need us to pray for Him. Our salah is for the protection of our own souls and nothing else. It's just something else. It's not about achieving a specific outcome. It's actually about entering the mercy of Allah. 
Now Avan and Nikama. And the Prophet said, if possible, do not abandon Avan. Do not abandon Avan and Nikama and don't die before you become a Muawdin. So recite it loudly. Doors of Jannah are open at Avan time. Raise your hands in dua at this particular time and recite Adhan. You know what? Make it a habit at home to have Adhan recited, whether it's on your computer or on your phone or on your clocks or whatever it is. You will never be alone. It creates a baraka that is unbelievable. But in essence, it's an announcement to all your body parts, an announcement to all the energies of the attendance and the agenda to the meeting of the heart with the Creator. That's literally what Adhan is about. Then your intention, your niyyah. We say, I am praying three rakats of Maghrib, Qurbatan ilallah. Intention is greater than the act. The Prophet said it's the act itself. I'm doing my intention. I'm saying, I'm praying this to get closer to Allah, to reach my full potential. Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 162. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Indeed, my salah, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Rabb of the worlds. Then takbiratul haram. So in takbirat al-ahram, I'm saying the meeting has begun. No distractions at all. I am totally focused on Allah. That's all I'm going to do because the meeting has begun. And that is literally what it's about. Unless it's life or death. Unless it's um, maybe your children are in danger. Or if your wealth is at danger. Nothing should matter. And in the most beautiful dua taught by Imam Zain al I absolutely adore it. When he said, Ya Muhsinu Kadatak al Musi, O the one who does Ihsan, O the one who gives more than I deserve. In front of you is the sinner. Fatajawas and Kabihi Ma Andi Bijamili Ma in the Kaya Kareem. Change what is bad in me, what is evil in me, or what is ugly in me to what is beautiful in you. Now you could say Kadatak al Musi Bihaki Muhammadin Wahali Muhammad because the the wasila of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad for the jawas and kabihi ma'indi wa jamili ma'indi kaya kareem. And we stand in front of our Rabb to think, I am standing in front of the Creator. And then we recite the Quran. The Qirat is Surah Al Fatiha and another Surah. Surah Al Fatiha, in essence, is a totality of the message of the Quran. It's a cure for every disease. To have that in our heads, it mends hearts. It is two thirds of the Quran. You know, Shaitan cried on four occasions when La'na was done on him. And La'na is withdrawal of mercy, when Allah withdraws his mercy from him, when he was thrown out of Jannah, when the Prophet was born, and when Surah Al-Fatiha was revealed. Learn the surahs of the Qur'an, alternate them. You can even pick up the Qur'an and read the surahs of the Qur'an, but learn to read different surahs. When you go into Ruku, it is politeness. The zikr of ruku is from Surah Al-Waqiyah. You know, the Prophet said your sins are placed on your shoulder and on your head. When you go into ruku, they fall off. When you into sijda, they all fall off. So do this proximity. And Imam Ali said, if you know the blessings that descended in sajda, you would not lift your head. Can you imagine? It's a place of hajat. It's turning away from everything except Allah. You're absolutely, totally with Allah, there's nothing you can see, you're down there. And that's such the God that we have. And most of our such the gods are, they have a little bit of earth from Karbala. We used to remember the such the of Hussein salam, when he taught us freedom, freedom from everything except Allah, to be connected only to him. Now in such the many of us only sort of do a dua in the last such the of Salah. But to say, Ya Khair al Mas'uleen, or the best of those who has to be asked. Ya Khair al Mu'teen, or the best of the one who grants. Or Zukni, give me risk, give me sustenance, and that's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Wa Zuk Ayali, and grant sustenance to my family, to my people. Min Fadlika, from your Fadl, from that extra bit. Fa inna kadul Fadl al Azim. Because you are the one who is the most honored, most greatest of ones who give that is not, which is not deserved. In between the two sajdas, we say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu 
we seek forgiveness it actually stops us from distraction takes us back brings us back to where we are we're going back to Allah you know when the two sajdas were explained by Imam Ali he used the eye of Surat Taha where you you come from the earth and you're going back into it and to think that I was raised from the earth and I will go back to it and I will be raised again those are our two sajdas and are coming back again so literally life is that period of time in between the two sajdas and when we come up again, we say tashahud. Now at the beginning of Salah in Adhan Ikama, we're preparing to enter a situation of total trust in Allah. When we come back from both the sajdas, it's a wakefulness. It's coming back to the world. And that's why we start with tashahud. And when we bear witness that there is only one God, that the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. And we also say, you can say, Accept for, from his shafa'a. You know, we're using the Prophet as a wasila. And then finally, salam, which is in ex essence security from any sort of intrusion. You finish the salah, you're a totally different person. So the security from any intrusion, and it's a name of Allah that grants of safety. As-salam is a name of Allah. So to be able to recite that again and again and again. And that, in essence, is what Salah is all about. And like I mentioned before, Salah encompasses all the dhikr. It encompasses Quran. It encompasses Dua. It encompasses Istighfar, a whale. All these things are done all together. And I will repeat again that if we can just imagine this, if we can give our time to Salah, if we can understand what we are praying, my goodness, it then does become, because the Prophet said, it was mi'arajil mu'mineen. It was that which causes the human being to ascend. And it's absolutely phenomenal. So let us end with the Surah Al-Fatiha for all the marhumin and the dua for protection for marhumin for those who are ill and those who are in trouble bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar rahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladhina an'amta alayhim ghayril maghdubi alayhim waladhdallin let us pray for those who are ill those who are in trouble and for all our marhumin and let's pray um read the dua for protection li khamsatun utfi biha harral waba il hatima al mustafa wal murtada wa abnahuma wal fatima li khamsatun utfi biha harral waba il hatima المصطفى والمرتضى وأبناهما والفاطمة جزاكم الله خير إن شاء الله سيما مانديه